In this video, we're gonna find duplicate entries in Excel using Power Query. Now, I'm going to assume that you're trying to identify your duplicates. If your intention is to just remove your duplicates and you don't care about identifying which lines are your duplicates, then it would be probably the easiest just to highlight your data, go under data and click on this remove duplicate button and take it from here, right? But because you may want to check your records, keep some and delete some others based on the duplicates you find, you may need to identify your duplicates first before you deal with them. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, in my case, the way I have this data, I'm gonna look at duplicates in this first and last column. So you could have a situation when you only need to look at one column to check your duplicates or maybe more than two columns. So I'm gonna give you this example with two columns and you can take this idea and expand it to as many columns as you need or just reduce it to just one column. So in my instance, I'm gonna find duplicates based on this first and last name columns right here. So I'm gonna first highlight this data Notice that my data in the first row has column names. You do need this column names. So I got first, last amount. So I'm gonna go under this data tab right here and I'm gonna do this from table range. I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna ask me, does your table have headers? This first row is gonna be our headers. So that's a yes, press okay. And it's gonna basically connect that data to this Power Query Editor right here. And this is the name of that connection called Table 8. Probably not the best name. So let's just call this All Data or something. So some name that you can ID that and you can see that shows up here on the left. Now, when you do duplicate check, you can duplicate check either case sensitive or non-case sensitive. What I mean by that, if you look here, for example, we got Jane and last name here, and we have that same Jane over here in lower case. So if we do case sensitive, we're gonna consider these two things to be two different things. But for my case, I'm gonna consider this to be not case sensitive because I'm going to assume that for most people, they will consider these to be duplicates. But that's up to you. So if you want to do case sensitive, you don't need to do the steps that I'm about to do in a second. So for the columns that should not be case sensitive, like this first and last names, I'm going to create a duplicate of these columns. So I'm gonna right click and duplicate this column. And then this last name would be the second column I'm checking against. So again, right click and duplicate this column. There it is, duplicate column. And now I got a copy of each one of those. So I'm gonna click on this first column and I'm gonna go to this transform up here. And under transform, I'm gonna go under format and I'm gonna convert this to lowercase. This one too, I'm gonna to click on that, format, lowercase. So now everything is converted to lowercase in both of those columns. If you're concerned about having some extra spaces in your data, you may also want to just go here and format and trim your data, which will remove all the extra spaces before and after your data. In my case, I'm not concerned about those, but it might be worth to do that for these columns as well. Now, again, if you don't have data that could be like uppercase, lowercase, and you're not dealing with this, you don't need to create this copy columns I just did. You can just use your original columns. The only reason I'm doing these is because I have this upper lowercase situation. I wanna deal with that too. I'm gonna to rename this columns just to make it easy to deal with. So I'm gonna create this first one. I'll call it first ID and rename this one too and call it last ID. So now I got my columns I need. So this will be what I need here. I'm also gonna add one more extra column here. So I'm gonna click on this add column on top. And here I'm gonna add an index column. So see this index column drop down. I'm gonna do from one. And the reason I want this index column is because if I want to later restore my original order of data the way it was in my original table, then I can use this index. If we don't care about that original order, we wouldn't have to do this. So once I got this in this particular shape, then I'm gonna go here, see on the left, we can see this old data connection we just made. I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna duplicate that whole connection here. See, we got this first one 
and the second one, which is exactly the same thing. So for the second one, I'm just going to rename this to counts. And you'll see why I'm calling it this. And what I'm going to do, I'm only going to keep the columns I want to check against. So if you remember, we're just checking against first and last name. So I'm just going to keep these columns that I just made. So I'm going to remove these three. So I'm going to click on this, shift this, right click and remove columns. And then I'm also going to remove this index column. So this is all I'm going to keep. So if you wanted to use any of your original columns in this check too, and you didn't really convert them to lowercase, you would keep those as well. So I'm going to take these two, convert it to this, go to home section and click on group by up here. And here, if you only had one column you're checking against, then at this point, you would just select here under basic that single column. In my case, I'm checking against two columns, or maybe you have three columns, then I'm going to go under advanced. And I'm going to click add grouping and choose that second column as well as the second column I'm checking against. If you have three, you would add another grouping and keep doing this. For me, I have only these two, I'm going to add those two. And I'm going to keep the rest exactly like this count here count rows here. With this, I'm going to press OK. And what's going to happen here for the lines where I had more than one, like if I had more than one Anna Smith, it will remove those duplicates here. So those lines here are gone. So if I check in the all data, see, I got like 17 total count. If I go to counts, now we got less because we removed those duplicate lines here. And for those that had more than one, we just give a count. Like we have three Anna Smith lines. We have two of this and so on. So this is our counts table. So now I'm just going to add these counts to our first original data to this. And to do so, I'm just going to go to this first all data and I'm going to go to this merge on top and do merge as new. So this will basically new create a whole new connection in addition to this two, which will be that new data, which also has the counts in it. So I'm going to click on this. You'll see how this works in a second. This is going to pop up. This is that old data, the first table. I'm going to select counts table. And now I'm going to make sure I point to the right columns in both tables. So I made this ID column. If I only had one match, I would just click on this ID column here. That's it. But for me, I have two columns I'm matching against. So after I click on this first ID, I'm going to press control and do last ID as well. If you had more, you would just press control and highlight more of those columns. For me, it's just these two. And I'm going to do the same here. Click here, control, click here. One, two, one, two. Left outer join. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to press OK. And right now, what's going to happen is that on the right here, we have, see, this table. And if I open that table, it's going to have these extra columns we can expand. And I'm only going to select count from these. Press OK, and it's going to add those counts for us here. See, it says three of this, three of this, three of this. And as you can see, the original index order is now different. So it went like 1, 2, 11, 13. That's the way we have our data now. So if you wanted now your data to be in its original order, then you could sort it by this index like this ascending. So now our data would be exactly in the order it was in our original table. And that would be pretty much what you're after. But most of the time, you would probably want to group those duplicates next to each other. So it's easier to kind of go through your data and see what's happening. And for that reason, I'm going to remove this last step I did sorted rows, I'm going to remove that where I sorted by index. And instead, I'm going to first sort by these columns. So I'm going to go with this first ID column, sort, and then this ID column, sort. And the reason I was doing this this way, I'm going to have like all Anna Smith kind of next to each other. So it's easier to see them instead of spread out across the whole table. And if you wanted these different combinations to be in the same order they used to be in the data. See, right now it's 11, 13, 2. Now I could sort this by this index. And the first Anna Smith that was in our data will now appear on top. 
and then the second one would appear next. You could also do descending if you wanted the last one to go on top and the first one to go all the way down. It's up to you. For me, I'm going to make the first one. So this one is ascending. So with this particular sorting order, now I have my data, I have my identifiers. At this point, you could keep this exactly as is, or you could delete some of the stuff from here if you don't want to look at them. Like for example, I could remove these three columns at this point, because even though I need them to identify these things, I don't really need them when I start working with this data. You could keep those, like I said, if you want to look at those, I'm going to remove those. So now I just have whatever I had in my original data, first and last name, columns. I have amount columns, like I had in my data, and this count column that tells us like how many duplicates we got. So now I'm going to rename this. It says merge one. I'm going to just call this duplicates selected. And I'm just going to load this back to Excel. So to do this, we're just going to go close and load, close and load two, and we're going to do a table and new worksheet like it's selected here. I'm going to press OK. Now this is going to load all those connections I did. See, I have this duplicate selected thing that shows up here, but it also gives us that count table and it gives us that all data table. I don't really want these here, so I'm just going to delete those. They will still remain here as a connection, but we don't need them in our spreadsheet. We will keep this. So now here, if I just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that, for example, for Shane Brown, we know we got two, and those are the records we see right here. In the same way, see Anna Smith, we got three of those, and see the count three is here. And then you can see for Jane, even though this one is uppercase, this is lowercase, we still put them next to each other. We got two of those records right there. So that works as it should. If you only want to look at duplicate records only, you could just open this and remove the count one. And anything that's not count one, you would know these are the duplicate rows. And you could at this point decide what you want to do with these records. And if your intention was to only look at those duplicate lines to begin with, you could have added that step in this connection when we made this. So if I go right click here and do edit, see, once we got to this point, we could have just gone to this column and removed all the ones from here and press OK. And that would filter the ones that are not duplicates, the unique ones out of our way and only keep the ones that were duplicates. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to cancel this and then you would load it back. In my case, I'm just going to keep it as this and this is our results. So this works. So now we got our duplicates. Now let me show you how nice this is if you have to repeatedly do this over and over with new data. So if your data changes or you have new data, you can just copy paste your new data here, or let's say we have a couple of more records here. So for example, for Jessica Brown, right now, if you look here, there are no duplicates. It just says count one. Let's just go ahead and create a duplicate for her. And then let's add another person. So now once I got this new data, all I have to do is just go here and click refresh. And if you don't see this panel here and it was closed, you can get it back by going under this data tab on top here and click on this queries and connections. And this will show up. Now I just have to refresh this duplicate selected. And just like that, see, it will add that Jessica Brown now here that we got two of them, see, based on this new data. I just got here, this 444 amount now shows up here as well. And then we also should have Maria now, if I go here and we scroll down someplace here, see that shows up right there and there are no duplicates for that. So now every time I have to do this, all I have to do is just put my data there, hit refresh. It will automatically do all those steps I just did and it just works and shows what's happening then we can still filter this and look only at those that are duplicates and decide what we're going to do at this point. And that should do it.
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.